What is going on guys? What's poppin'? So it's been a long time since I've done a Dallas Cowboys video and today we're gonna go back to that for just a little bit. Uh, I'm still gonna be doing my Spurs content. I'm just gonna do start implementing a little bit of Cowboys offseason stuff here and there when I see fit and honestly it's something I've been wanting to do. A little mock draft so let's go and jump into it and get started. Um, I, I did all seven rounds. I, I have it written down here. I have some notes written down that I'm going to share. I have my picks written down, that sort of thing. And it was the Draft Network. They have a mock draft machine on their website. It's kind of cool. I, I feel like that's probably what most every YouTuber uses. But um, anyways, we had the number 10 pick. And the first thing I noticed for the Cowboys were that the big three quarterbacks are off the board, which I expect to happen in real life. And that's Trevor Lawrence. Justin Fields, and Zach Wilson. Now, Zach Wilson's kind of a wild card. I mean, he could drop, but most mocks I'm seeing now have him going top three, top five, which um, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Trey Lance seems to be the odd man out of, out of those guys. So he may drop out of the top 10. I, I still think he's going to be a first-round pick, but he's not going to be part of that first three quarterbacks taken. Um, and this mock draft there were two wide receivers off the board um i've gone through a couple others and usually all three go off but uh it was jamar chase out of lsu was it Devonte smith out of alabama and jalen waddle out of uh, alabama was the one that was still available so usually jalen goes like eight or nine but um and this mock he was there uh obviously from my perspective dallas cowboys aren't going to draft a wide receiver that just makes zero sense um even though we did last year, but we're, we're really deep a wide receiver, obviously. So, Penny Sewell went fifth to Cincinnati in this one. Uh, I've seen him drop as low as like eight or nine. Uh, if he would have dropped the 10th, I would have definitely taken him. Patrick Sertain, the second out of Alabama, defensive back, is the guy I wanted. He went sixth to Philly. And I put G's in parentheses because, I mean, that sucks, right? You see Philly get our guy before us. That kind of blows but um, Mika Parsons, the linebacker out of Penn State, went 8th to Carolina. If he was on the board, I would have definitely taken him as well. Just can't miss talent. Quitty Pay, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right, defensive end, edge rusher, went ninth to Denver. So I, I wasn't upset about it. I mean, I was hoping Sertan would be there, but I've done a few mocks for like the first round, and every time all those guys are off the board, the only – Guys that I'm interested in that are available are like Kyle Pitts or Caleb Farley. So my thought process here is I'm not impressed with value for team needs. Like th those are the only two guys I'm interested in. Kyle Pitts is the best player available in my opinion there. Um, but we have an abundant amount of weapons on offense. You know, I already mentioned Gallup, Amari Cooper, and C.D. Lamb. Uh, the tight end position was a plus this year, so it, it was an unexpected strength. So do we really need uh, Kyle Pitts' tight end? I mean, it would definitely upgrade the position in the offense, but I think he's a luxury that um, we can't afford on a, on a losing defense. So my pick was uh, obviously Caleb Farley, defensive back out of Virginia Tech. Um, 6'2", 197, and I put Y. Uh, because of his size, because he's a fluid athlete, because he can man up and would fit opposite side of Trayvon Diggs. And I would like those guys playing some press man. If you have like Farley or Sertain out there and Diggs and Anthony Brown has some legit speed. So I, I would definitely like to see some some manning up on defense. Um, Move on to the second round. And, and so guys, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that pick. But like I said, the, the guys I really wanted were gone. But uh, Farley's a big defensive back, and I think he's a really good talent. So I'm pretty happy about it. Second round pick, 42nd pick of the draft. Alabama defensive tackle Christian Barmore went to Denver, the pick right before me. And I put, you've got to be freaking kidding me. I mean, again, the guy I want goes right before our pick. So that, that could very well happen in real life. So our pick in the second round, I picked Jay Tufele. I think it's Tufele out of Southern Cal, defensive tackle, 6'3", 315 pounds. And I put why? Because he's a three-tech, three-down lineman. He's explosive, disruptive in the run game. Um, the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame is that Liam Ecken, yeah, Eichenberg was available. Uh, just not sold out on him as a, as a franchise left tackle of the future to replace Tyron Smith over the next couple of years. 
Um, too expensive as, of a pick for a backup swing tackle when I have the opportunity to bring in a capable defensive tackle and potentially bring Gerald McCoy back. So what I'm basically saying is, yeah, we might have a starting offensive tackle there, but when I have a legit player, defensive tackle, and I can just put so much depth there that we just haven't had in the past. I mean, now we have Tristan Hill, Neville Gallimore, and we don't know when Hill's going to come back from injury and how he's going to look, but Gallimore had an okay season. He showed some flashes and maybe bring back Gerald McCoy, who you know can can play, although he's coming off a big injury too. And then you add a guy like Jay Tufele, and I'm thinking, okay, now we have some legit depth at defensive tackle. So that was important to me for that pick. But note, not a lot of great names available. This pick took the best value I could get. Yeah, there weren't a lot of guys in that second round, early second round that I really loved, but uh, it kind of is what it is. Other players I considered were Mike Linebacker, Cameron McGrone out of Michigan, and safety Trayvon Morig out of TCU. So two good players, but looking back, I'm definitely glad I didn't pick the safety because you'll find out we'll get some really good safety value in um, mid to late rounds. So moving on to the third round, pick number 74, uh, pretty easy pick for me. Tyler Shelvin, defensive tackle, LSU, 6'3", 362 pounds. And no, I did not plan on picking a defensive tackle two picks in a row or anything like that. Uh, he just kind of fell into my lap there, and uh, I like the player. So I put why. All in on building the middle of the defensive line. Big body that will only play rundowns. We need a guy like that on the team, and he's a quality one. So yeah, he can pretty much only play rundowns, but he's really good at it. I mean, we lack a, a big body on that defensive line. And, I mean, Shelvin's it, man, 360 pounds, and he's going to command double teams, and we're going to start to shut down on the run, and that's even more depth at defensive tackle that I think we direly need. So I passed on offensive lineman Jackson Carmen out of Clemson, uh, put big body, I think he's like 6'5", 325 pounds or something, that probably plays guard in the NFL. Wonder if we and, and that's kind of my downside on him is I really wanted a swing tackle, not not a uh, a tackle that should probably be moved to left guard or right guard. Um, I did say wonder if we could replace Connor Williams with him day one though, and and that would be an interesting pick, but uh, I I just didn't go that route. Passed on Jabril Cox, linebacker out of LSU. Not a read and react defender, but has good physical tools. That, to me, sounds just like Jalen Smith. So I, I don't want to bring in another guy that has to you know, slowly process information and is quick to the ball, but can't read and react. So that's why I passed on him. And I also put not sold on the safeties. And it's not that I wasn't sold, per se, but there's so many, and I didn't have huge favorites that I wanted to take that early. I put Rich Grant out of UCF, Richard LeCount out of the third out of UGA, Andre Cisco out of Syracuse, Paris Ford out of Pittsburgh, Hamza Nazaruddin out of Florida State, and but less so than I'm not sold on them, and more so that I have a particular one that I love between Grant, Cisco, Ford, and I hope that someone will fall to the fourth. So that was kind of my point. There's so many safeties right there. I think that somebody's bound to fall, right? And then we'll just go with whoever's there in the next round. So we move on to the fourth round where I think we have three picks, so two must be comp picks. Um, pick 99, and I said I was right. So I bet on some of the safeties I was interested in being available in this round, and they were. So LeCount, Ford, and Nazaruddin all were there, as well as Tariq Thompson out of San Diego, and Talanoa Hufanga out of Southern Cal. The pick I made was Paris Ford, safety, out of Pittsburgh, six feet tall, 190 pounds, not a huge safety, but he definitely plays big and he plays physical guys. So big fan of the player. Um, why fast to the ball, aggressive, physical plays bigger than his size. Like I said, in my opinion, will be an upgrade over Xavier Woods. And I wouldn't be surprised if he's an upgrade day one. As a matter of fact, I get to the point to where probably can't afford to resign Xavier Woods. Anyways, you got to let some guys walk, especially if you plan on bringing Dak Prescott back, um, and paying him. You got to let some guys walk. So Xavier Woods is probably one of those guys. Mike can even start day one. Probably fell some due to his size. Like I said, not worried about that, right? He plays big. Um, would be a good third round pick in my opinion. And I'm just happy he kind of fell into my lap in the fourth. Um, because that's a position I really needed. 
Also considered our Darius Washington, safety out of TCU. Another small ball safety, 5'8", 179, that plays physical. Uh, I just think Ford is slightly better prospect. And I think you're just taking more of a risk with uh, Washington because he is a bit smaller. Uh, another guy that plays big, though. Then, though, we get to the fourth round, 114th pick, which uh, 15 picks later. I said, first off, wasn't aware we had another, and we had two more pick there. Uh, assumed it was a comp pick. Edge rushers available are just okay. Ronnie Perkins out of Oklahoma, interesting. And uh, Jonathan Cooper out of Ohio State was probably the most notable one that intrigued me. Um, just his pass rushing ability. Uh, I was intrigued by him as a depth option I put in a pass rusher. The pick I made, though, because he was still on the board, was our Darius Washington. Safety out of TCU, 5'8", 179. And, uh, yeah, I, I got us two safeties. So I'm basically saying let's let Xavier Woods walk, maybe let Darian Thompson walk, that kind of thing. And uh, Donovan Wilson could definitely play. And I, I think he's under contract anyways. But I'm bringing in two undersized but physical rangy safeties that I, I really think are good football players. So I'm excited about that. Hard hitters too, aggressive, physical. Um, I said, why? Why not? Did we need both him and Ford? No, probably not. But I just added a ton of talent at the two positions the Cowboys have been most lacking in recent years, defensive tackle and safety. So I added two guys at each position. And that's where Cowboys fans, including myself, have wanted Dallas to invest in. And so I, I made that conscious decision to do that. Um, all four of these guys would rotate and bring a ton of talent to the table at their respective positions. Washington is physical and a ball hawk. No interceptions last year, but it's because quarterbacks just literally don't throw his way because he is a ball hawk, let me tell you. He will get interceptions at some point in the NFL. This also probably gives us the ability to let Xavier Woods walk free agency. I already mentioned that. If we pay Dak, that kind of thing, probably won't be able to afford some guys. Um, underperformed, in my opinion, last year, unlike Donovan Wilson, who I thought was a standout, made some plays. Uh, let's get rid of this sheet. Other interesting options with that pick were running backs Trey Sermon and Chuba Hubbard. If we really needed a running back there, you know, that's probably the pick I'm going to make. But we, we just have too too much talent already there. I'm not going to say depth. But uh, Zeke is Zeke. And um, he, whether we like it or not, he's going to get a bulk of the carries. And Tony Pollard is very talented. So he's there as well. Um, so that's a luxury that we just couldn't afford, in my opinion. And I have some, some specific guys late round that I kind of had in mind that I wanted to look into. One being Jared Patterson out of Buffalo, another being C.J. Mirable out of Coastal, just to give us a really solid third string running back, right? So move on to the last pick of the fourth round, and that's pick 139. I put another fourth round pick. Let's go. All right, so the pick I made was Shaka Tony, edge rusher out of Penn State, 6'3", 240. Um... Why? Because he outproduced, was it your tour gross matos in 2019? And in 2020, he outproduced, God, I got to look the guy's name up, um, Jason Owa, who's supposed to be picked in the first three rounds. Uh, he was the better pass rusher. And you rotate him with Randy Gregory, with um, Alden Smith, opposite side of Demarcus Lawrence next year, and you got a thing. And, and that's if we re sign Alden Smith, but that's assuming. So there's definitely something there. Um, other edge rushers available there didn't stand out to me and weren't a scheme fit. I was really looking for a pass rusher. I don't care if he can play in the middle because I just got Shelvin and Tefele to be able to, is it Tufele? I, I don't know, but to be able to play defensive tackle in the middle. So I wasn't concerned about that. Um, who I passed on this time, Brady Christensen out of BYU, offensive lineman. Projects to be a backup swing tackle, possibly even guard. And yeah, we could probably really use that. So maybe that's a pick in retrospect that uh, that I should have made, but we'll get to that. And yeah, we probably could use that. But this is probably my last shot at a legitimate pass rusher. And Shaka Tony intrigued me enough to make the move. So it turns out it's not going to be. But uh, I thought it might be. I thought it'd be the last real talent rotation piece we could get as far as a pass rusher pass rusher pass rusher goes in the draft right so um i said i'm also interested in shy smith wide receiver out of south carolina but he's not very big so he gets hit in the middle prone to fumbles that sort of thing 
Um, problem is he's too small, and we don't really have a big enough need for another slot receiver right now. Yeah, he would just be a depth piece and not a guy that would get a lot of snaps because he'd be taken away from Gallup, from Amari Cooper, from C.D. Lamb, but also from Cedric Wilson and Noah Brown, right? So don't really see that happening. Um, moving on to, I guess, is it day three? Um, round five, pick 177. Maybe not. I think six and seven is day three. But anyways, last pick of day two. Just missed out on Puka Williams and Jared Patterson. They were picked like four or five picks before me there. Um, I was two running backs I was interested in, but I was really pissed mostly about Jared Patterson because I was really, really hoping I could get him in the sixth. And uh, I didn't, and I, I regret that, but nothing I can really do about that, right? Pick I made was Marco Wilson, defensive back out of Florida, six foot 190. Why? Because he's a versatile player, right? So he wouldn't be asked to start as, as a rookie, and that's definitely a good thing because I, I don't think he'll be ready to. He moves well, he processes information quickly, and he has the talent to be a solid depth piece in the NFL. His um brother, Quincy Wilson, I believe, was a second-round pick. He's been around the league, uh, hasn't really worked out too well. Uh, last I heard, he was like either on the Giants or the practice squad or the Jets or something like that. Uh, don't really know where he is now, but uh, didn't pan out. I, I think Marco Wilson will pan out with less expectations for sure. Probably needed another defensive back, and I'm glad I got that kind of quality this many picks in. Nobody else stood out, although Trill Williams was still on the board, so that's interesting, out of Syracuse. But uh, glad Marco Wilson was there because I probably would have just traded the pick otherwise. Yeah, I, I didn't like like a lot of names I was seeing right there on the board. And guys, I, I was going position by position, but I wasn't going really deep. Um, you know, I already spent two, three hours with this, so I didn't want to spend too much time but um anyways moving on to round six pick 188 and this is where it gets kind of sketchy right because most of these guys in the sixth and seventh round really don't pan out so we got what two six round picks and and a seventh pick i I believe and so yeah i kind of went more so with guys that i'm personally familiar with that i know can play football and even though they might not be drafted in real life they could be um especially the guy i picked which is um, Taron Jackson, edge rusher out of my alma mater, CCU 6'2", 270. And I know you're thinking it's a homer pick for sure, but hear me out. So complete homer pick. It's just I've seen this guy play a lot, and I know what he brings to the table. Day three picks are typically crapshoots, and I know the talent and athleticism is there with him. He's strong, explosive, and looks like an NFL player. He has the build. Um, In my honest opinion, he's built like Randy Gregory. I mean, he stands out when you see him, especially in the Sun Belt Conference. But even against teams like BYU, you saw him out there, and you're like, okay, this is like a man among boys. Like, this guy can play. And uh, he's physical. Good hands and uh, powerful hands and projects to be a rotational piece at a defensive end at the next level. Um, is there a chance he doesn't pan out? Sure, of course. There's a chance that 95% of the six-round picks don't pan out. But I think there's also a really solid chance that he does pan out as like a rotational pass rusher. Um, not bad value regardless of where he's projected to be drafted. And he's definitely a guy that I think will be drafted within the sixth or seventh round. I'd be pretty shocked if he goes undrafted because there's a lot of edge rushers out there. And, and those late rounds that just aren't all that impressive. They have some serious flaws and um, he, he looks like a true pass rusher and has the NFL body for it. So, I said, not sold on any of the offensive linemen still available here. So, like I said, um, with Christensen out of BYU, yeah, I probably should have gotten the offensive linemen earlier because they just started to go and there just wasn't any talent left that I was looking for. Um, all of them were more suited to play guard and I really wanted to swing tackle And they were more suited in the run game. I really wanted a guy that could come in and just kind of protect Dak Prescott, Andy Dalton, whoever the quarterback is, and um, on the right side or the left side. And uh, that time, just the right guy at the right pick just never came there. Why take an offensive tackle just to take a tackle when I can get the guy I want? Don't leave talent out there to miss out on. So, yeah, that's something I really stood by with this draft was I'm not going to take an offensive tackle just to take a guy – the right fit, right? I I want the right guys. And um the right offensive tackle just wasn't there. It was unfortunate. We need to go out and get a guy for sure. Um maybe it's a mistake on my behalf, but uh I'm stuck by what I thought. 
Anyways, the last pick of the sixth round. We got two more picks left, so stay with me. I picked, so it's pick 222. I picked C.J. Marable, running back out of Coastal Carolina University, 5'10", 190. And I know you're, you're thinking, Ryan, you really went and picked another Coastal player. We get it. You went to Coastal, but but what gives? And um, honestly, maybe I am reaching a little bit because he, he'll probably be undeclared free agent. But um, there's no given that he won't be drafted, right? So if you want your guy, you better go out and get him because uh, you never know what another team is thinking. I really wanted Jared Patterson, but he was gone. Um, Maribel's a talented running back, and he would bring some depth to the team. He's not going to be asked to do too much in Dallas, period, Um, especially season one. I put I wanted Patterson. He was gone earlier than I expected. Maribel is the last running back on my running back board, but he was on my board. I mean, he was one of the guys I wanted. Um... Is Patty Fisher a better pick? The uh, linebacker, kind of, I can't think of where he went, like Northwestern or Iowa or something. Probably, um, maybe. But I'm going with a guy that I've seen play over and over and over again with my own two eyes, and I know has the ability and talent to play in the NFL, right? Let's be completely honest, guys. I haven't seen a ton of Patty Fisher tape, but I've seen a lot of Taron Jackson tape. I've seen a lot of C.J. Marable tape. And do I think Marable is going to be a starter in the NFL? No, I don't. But do I think he's going to be a really – Solid rotational piece of the running back position. Yeah, I, I do. I think he can handle some carries. I think he'll do better in pass protection than some of the guys that were still left on the board. So um, that's just my my thing. Especially like the guy at UCLA that's like 5'10", 185. Small guy. Um, Marable is small, but he, he's compact. So moving on. Final pick of the draft. Uh, kind of got fun with this one. Um Mostly because I'm not a big fan of what Ben DiNucci brings to the table. I'm not saying we need to move on from him necessarily. I think maybe bring in some competition. There weren't really a lot of guys I wanted. Just nobody I really cared about in the seventh round. Wasn't going to pick a guy just to pick a guy. So with the 234th pick of the draft and our final pick, I picked Zach Thompson, quarterback out of App State, 6'1", 210. And um, before I read why, I'll tell you why. It's because he turned Appalachian State around as a, as a university. I mean, their football program has kind of had their golden years under Zach Thomas. Uh, he's a baller. He's a gamer. And um, I respect the guy. So it makes sense. I said why. We probably won't bring Garrett Gilbert back despite his good play. Although I'd be an advocate. Thing is, guys, he's 30 years old. Um, if anything, he probably wants the opportunity to be a backup not like third string, that kind of thing. And he could probably get that somewhere because he, he showed some ability when he did play this year with us, uh, even if it was one game. Uh, Thomas has the ability to run the ball. He's uh, he's quick. He's athletic. He doesn't have a great arm, but it's not a noodle. He, he's, a, he's a rhythm passer, right? Um, when he's getting the ball out in rhythm, he, he can put a little velocity in it, but he's not a big guy and he doesn't have a strong arm. Um, lots of success at the college level. He's a winner. He's like, gosh, what's his record? I think he only has like three losses, like 24 and 3, 28 and 3, 23 and 3, something like that in college at App State. Decent motion, decent quick release. Um, accurate when he's not throwing the ball downfield. So when it's short to intermediate routes, he's pretty accurate. Keep in mind, this is a seventh round pick that we hope can eventually develop into being a backup. So this isn't like the guy to replace Dak Prescott or something crazy like that, right? Um, would battle with Ben DiNucci. And to be honestly, uh, to be honest, I think day one, he could probably outplay him. So guys, that's my, my seven round picks. Uh, I'll reiterate them all real quick. And then I'll read, I, I wrote down a few of my biggest fails in this draft. It's just my opinion. And a few of my biggest victories. So I thought that would be something interesting to, uh, go over here in a second. But, uh, let's go back through it real quick. Starting with the first round pick. The uh, defensive back out of Virginia Tech, Caleb Farley. Second round pick, the defensive tackle out of Southern Cal, Jay Tafule. Um, third round pick, the uh, nose tackle out of LSU, Tyler Shelvin. Um, f- fourth round pick, safety, Paris Four out of Pittsburgh. Fourth round pick, our Darius Washington, safety out of TCU. Our third fourth round pick, Shaka Tony, edge rusher from the right side out of Penn State. Fifth round pick, Marco Wilson, defensive back out of Florida. Sixth round pick, Taron Jackson, edge rusher out of Coastal Carolina. 
and running back C.J. Marable out of Coastal Carolina, and then quarterback Zach Thomas out of App State. So those are my picks, guys. Let's find that sheet again, and uh, let's go over my biggest fails and then my biggest victories. So first biggest fail, definitely offensive line. Um, I really needed to get a swing tackle and bring some depth to the offensive line. In retrospect, round four was probably the right time to do so. Uh, that's when Christensen was available, I believe. And I got the two safeties. I'm happy about the players I got, no doubt about it, and that kind of talent. But uh, was it a luxury to get that second safety? Yeah, probably. So I picked two safeties and a pass rusher, which was probably a luxury. Probably should have gotten that swing tackle, that offensive lineman, right? So Christensen was probably the guy. Um, linebacker was my second biggest fail. The team really needs some depth at linebacker, obviously. Sean Lee will probably either retire or retire and become a coach. And uh, so we've got to replace him at some point. Jalen Smith isn't really panning out the way we want him to. Maybe he'll continue to improve, but haven't really seen it thus far. He's kind of regressed. And Van Der Esch can't really stay healthy, and he's kind of hit or miss some when he is healthy, but mostly good, right? So maybe Jabril Cox would have been the right pick at some point, but uh, I'm not too upset about that. They're, my guys weren't there. Don't know enough about Patty Fisher to choose him over a talent I've seen play at my alma mater over and over again. Um, tight end was my third biggest fail. Kyle Pitts in the first and Brevin Jordan in the second just seemed like luxuries to me. And they, they were, for sure. Uh, there were some other guys I was kind of hoping would fall. The guy out of t Ohio State, I uh, can't think of his name, but I, I, I didn't see him on the board at any time, so he might have just went kind of early, that sort of thing. So I thought some other guys would fall. I said Matt Bushman from BYU was the only one who was available in a like fourth, fifth round. But at 25 years old, I didn't want to pull the trigger. I mean, what is it going to provide at 25 that Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz already aren't? So I, I didn't see the need to have like a third guy kind of like them. Although I do respect his obvious talent. Um, so didn't really get the young tight end that I needed, but we didn't really need the tight end that bad. Uh, late round picks was my fourth and final fail, in my opinion. A lot of reasons why I took the players in the 6th and 7th that I did is because the talent I wanted just wasn't there. Um, I have no doubt I got good talents in Taron Jackson and C.J. Marable and Zach Thomas, but I probably picked them way before their actual projections. As in, Taron would, would have probably been like a uh, the edge rusher out of Coastal. would probably have been a 7th round pick. If I have to guess, he'll probably go in the 7th round in the NFL draft if he gets drafted. Marable probably doesn't get drafted, but you never know, right? Um, Zach Thomas, I, I think he was a decent pick. Now, would we draft a quarterback in the seventh round two years in a row? I don't know. In my opinion, if I'm the GM, Ben DiNucci doesn't seem like he's going to be the right guy. Maybe he'll progress, maybe not, but I'm bringing in another guy who I think has some real talent to uh, compete with him. Now, let's go with my biggest victories. Uh, the trenches. Wasn't afraid to go with what the team really needs some help with on the off defensive side of the ball. Yeah, I still left us with some holes, and notably linebacker, but I filled in some really big ones. Added another talent in Tufele to compete with Tristan Hill when he's healthy and Neville Gallimore. So, I mean, yeah, those three are just going to rotate. Um, Tufele, Hill, Gallimore, and I brought in a, the big run stopper we really needed in Shelvin. Like I said, I didn't plan on Shelvin being there. I didn't plan on taking him. But when I saw that, I was like, ooh, that's a huge need. Um, let's go with it. Secondary. Two big free agents, the defense back, and I went out and got a guy, even if it wasn't the one I wanted. Um, as in, it, I didn't really love Caleb Farley over Sertain, but both really good talent, so I'm not mad about it. I got the two guys I really wanted at safety, and Paris Ford and Ardarius Washington, so I'm happy about those. I'm happy about Farley. And even added another depth piece in Marco Wilson. And guys, even if Marco Wilson is doesn't pan out, even if it's like his he's like his brother Quincy Wilson, probably still a better player than like Reggie Robin. Not Reggie Robinson. Um, he's a rookie from last year. Rashard Robinson, uh, C.J. Goodwin. Who's the other guys we trotted out there at defensive back when we had some injuries? So I'm just giving us a depth piece if we do have some injuries and some of the starters are out. We'll have our three starters in Anthony Brown and Trayvon Diggs and Caleb Farley, and then he'll be a fourth or fifth defensive back. And the final thing I said is that I stayed true to myself. I didn't take a position of knee player that I didn't really like. 
and uh, just because we needed to plug a player in there, which mostly talking about linebacker and offensive line. Yeah, I really wanted an offensive lineman, but the right player just wasn't there, and I stood by my instincts. So, guys, I yeah, I think I did my thing with that. Um, definitely want you all to leave me a comment just giving your input, th- telling me what you think. Uh, definitely tell me who you would have drafted in these rounds, uh, that sort of thing. Go to that website, though. I'll probably leave a link. It, again, it's... um. let's see draft network so it's like the draftnetwork.com and when you go there it it shows the mock draft so it's fun to do because um you know some of the picks sometimes the players there sometimes they're not so like i said yeah would i look smarter if i said yeah i got certain in the first round maybe but um what are the odds that he's actually going to be there right so anyways guys i appreciate y'all watching this video if you enjoyed it definitely leave a thumbs up a like comment and be sure to subscribe if you're not already also click that notification bell next to the subscribe button and uh that way every time i post some cowboys content some spurs content you get a notification on your youtube channel guys that's pretty much gonna do it for today i'm out peace